بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. So now we're on lesson number three from the explanation, well not the explanation, but the reading of and the believers have a specific knowledge. So this now we're on still on page thirteen, and uh, we're on the paragraph. This is why we seek knowledge. All right, this is why we seek knowledge. All right, so Bismillah. All right, so this is why we seek knowledge. We try all our lives to be from this group. All right, what group am I talking about? The Ta'ifatun, the Ta'ifatun, the Surah Hadith, man. Hadith, Ma'awid. Ma'awid. Rawahu, man. Mutafakun Ali. Mutafakun Ali. Why are you even looking? I didn't even look. The Asl of the Hadith, it goes back to what? Of the... Man, you read Allah, bihan khayran, you fakta hu fi al-deen. And that's the asal of the hadith. That's all, the, all of that is connected. But a lot of the, you know, you see in Bukhari, we broke up the hadith into different parts and narrated from different parts. All right, so this is why we seek knowledge. We try all our lives to be from this group. We only hope that we can die and meet our Lord, and we are from this group of believers. The only way we can be from this group is by following the path of the people. Uh, the only way that we can be from this group is by following the path of the people that were from this group before us, from the Sahaba. To all the people that followed the guidance of Allah's final messenger to mankind. And of course, following the Sahaba, what? Following the Prophet. Yeah, all right. But where is that in the, where is that in the Quran? Surah Al-Nisa. 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 Al
if I were to take out all the IS, and this is basically going to sound like the class this morning, why you were well, in here, you, you came in, late. you came late though, was very, yeah, because we started the book. class, how do you make prayer? Well, you'll remember this because I told you, remember when we were, when I was teaching the class, I said this is going to be the khutbah, and you're basically hearing the khutbah this week. Because uh, the chapter that we started in Bukhari this morning at the Fajr was the chapter on knowledge, the Kitab al Amr, which is the book of knowledge. So I was given, going over the virtues of seeking knowledge, so a lot of this you're going to hear. I already be familiar with. Uh, you're going to hear the exact same thing probably again. <laughs> All right, if I were to take out all the ayahs from the Qur'an that show the virtues of seeking knowledge, this is going to be a huge book. I will maintain brevity by focusing on a group of ayahs from the Qur'an which give the most direct perspective of the benefits of seeking knowledge. If the only ayah in the Qur'an for the virtues of seeking knowledge was the following ayah, it would suffice. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ غَفُورٌ All right. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا يَفْشَى اللَّهَ And I'm going to go over the meaning of what Ibn al-Qayyim said in Madara Jasad al about the meaning of khashir. It's, it's all going to be here, so I don't need to... I went over this this morning, but, you know, for those that weren't here, you know, because they, they fell into a hamburger stupor, and they couldn't get up, all right, so... All right, so إِنَّمَا يَفْشَى إِنَّمَا is a word that's used in the Arabic language to use it to mean what? It means either a hasr or a hasr or a qasr. It's used for either of these two things. Al hasr it means that it's, it, it encompasses something. Al qasr it means it's only for that thing and nothing else. So when we say inna ma Allah, the only people that have a khashya, this, this this real fear of Allah, and the khashya, what is the difference between khashya and khawf? Khashya is when you fear Allah. Like al al khashya is fearing something they have knowledge of. Yeah, with khawf. knowledge. And al khawf can just be like be you're scared of the dark because mm. you don't know what's in the dark. And that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Inna ma yushallah min ibadihi al ulama." He said that the only people that have this type of fear are the the ulama, the people of knowledge, because they are the only ones that worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and fear Allah with knowledge. All right, and he said, "Min ibadihi," so from his servants. Al-Ulama, Inna Allah Azizun Ghafoor, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the Almighty and the All-Forgiving. So here, this ayah clearly shows that the only ones that can truly fear Allah are the servants that have knowledge. The word in Arabic which is used in the ayah, Al-Khashya, and according to, the, wait, the word in Arabic which is used in the ayah is Al-Khashya. And according to Ibn Qayyim in his book, the Madarij al this word means fear that is rooted in knowledge, because it's specifically what uh, Ibn Qayyim said. He said, "Al khashyatu a khassu min al khawf, fa an al khashyatu lil ulama billah." قال الله تعالى إنما يخشى الله من إبادي العلماء فهي خوف مقرون بالمعرفة. So that's exactly what Ibn Qayyim said in Madarij in Madarij Salakin. So he said that what he said that that. Uh, Khashya, this, this form of fear, is more specific than khawf, than which is the general fear. He said, why? Because he said, al-khashya la ulama, it's only for the ulama. And then he quoted the ayah, inna ma yafsha allaha min ibadihi al-ulama. And then after he said, he said, fahiyya khawfun maqroonun bil ma'rifa. So it's, it's, it's fear that is connected with knowledge. It's just not like, just like natural fear. It's fear connected with knowledge. So he said, therefore the servant can have, uh, uh, all right, therefore this, any servant can have khawf, al khawf, which is basic fear of Allah. And that fear will fluctuate based on the understanding of the deen the person has. But only those select servants can attain the level of al khashya, because that requires a high level of knowledge of Allah and his religion. Allah also said of the people of knowledge, أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذِرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرَجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّي قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُولُ الْأَلْبَابِ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, uh, you know, about the people, He said, are they better are those, or those who... أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ You know, the people who worship their uh, Lord devoutly, they're standing up in prayer. You know, in a, in a very, very devout, serious, you know, 
Like, you know, when they're standing up in prayer, they're like, that's, that's all they're focused on. That's all they're doing. They're focused only on that thing. And that later, all throughout the night, Sajidan, and they're in the state of sujood, and they're standing up. And they're, you know, and they're out of fear of the, uh, of, you know, of the, of the hereafter, and what's coming in the hereafter. And they're doing it with hope and getting the mercy of their Lord. He said, are those, are they the same? Are they equal? You know, you know, the person who knows, who has knowledge, and the person who doesn't have knowledge, are they equal? He said, إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَرُوا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ He said, the only people that truly ponder, ponder the, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are what? أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And these are the ulama. Those who understand. Yeah. He says, uh, look, this is the heart. The أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ yeah. All right. Can you explain Qanism again? Qanism means devote? devote? Yeah, like standing up in like extreme devotion. Like. And is this only for... Prayer is this for other acts of worship, like every other act of worship in the No, this is for prayer. Okay. Yeah. And that's why he said, Sad in Muqaim and Yahudu Akhirat of Rajur Ahmed Rabbi. Which goes to show you that the, uh, the, the, the praying at night is from what? Uh, from the trace. From the trace of the Holy of Allah. Yeah. So you really want to see like the real ulama and the real people of knowledge and then what? And they pray at night, you know, so that Allah make us, make us from them. All right, only people that have gained knowledge of this religion can personify the characteristics of the believers mentioned in this ayah. To be devout, devout in one's worship of Allah requires knowledge. To stand and prostrate while in a state of fear of Allah for what might take place on the day of judgment requires knowledge. Therefore, no doubt remains that the ones that have no knowledge are not equal in any regards to the people that have knowledge. We also have need to understand that if a person wants to be raised in status with Allah in this life and the next, knowledge is the means to achieving that high status. Allah says in the Quran, in the Quran Ya Rafa'illahu alladheena aminu minkum walladheena utul ilma darajat wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will elevate the people, you know, alladheena aminu minkum. But but the people that have been given knowledge, darajat, that they will be raised levels and levels and levels and in, in, in high in high rank. So the people that that believe in Allah and they have the basic basic knowledge that enters them into Islam, Allah raises them above the creation. You know, not like this is a means of a person to become arrogant. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised you out of out of this this this, this dhulamat. You know, He's raised you out of this darkness that the people are living in. And you have, you know, a little bit of light that you can see. You can see a bit of the truth. But now you get a person who now takes that little bit of light and starts searching some more. And then he starts to get more knowledge and more knowledge and more knowledge. And then he gets further and further away from that darkness and more and more into, you know, just the brightest of light. You know, it's where now everything becomes clear to him. So you can't compare it to these, these people. So I mean, so no doubt with the people of knowledge and the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted that knowledge to, like their rank and their status is going to be way higher. Even if the people in the dunya don't have any concern about them, that doesn't matter. Well, we're dealing with the, their status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, Wallahu bima ta'amaluna, bima ta'amaluna wa khabir. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of everything that you do. This elevation of one's status with Allah can only be achieved through beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. Because obviously it's not just knowledge, but the person has to have knowledge and then he has to do what? Back it up. He has to act on, act on the knowledge. He has to practice what you preach, right? This elevation of one's status, the status with the law can only be achieved, achieved through beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. The root of the righteous, uh, righteous actions is beneficial knowledge. People nowadays seek that elevation of status, but they seek it from the people. Any at elevation of your status from the people will fall under the following hadith. And Anas radiallahu anhu kana nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naqa tusamal ababa. La tusbaq. He'll probably know this hadith from Fajr. 
Ibn Spoken also mentioned his hadith in Fajr. So he said, Anas anhu, he reported that the Prophet I didn't read the whole hadith, I only read the last part in Fajr, but now you get the whole entire hadith. That he had a nap, but that he had a camel. All right, a she camel. And the name of the camel was Al Ababa. La Tusbaq. And you know, it, like, it was so fast that it was never defeated in races. And, but Humayd said, Al La Takadu. And uh, two spots are like, uh, like basically it won the majority of the races. All right, Faja Arabiun. But then, a, then a Bedouin came. All right, and he he had his he was riding on a camel, right? All right, and this this is a camel that was below six years of age, which is a Qurud. Fasabaqaha, and it defeated it, it, it outpaced and and beat the uh, the camel of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a race. So, so they, they found difficulty in accepting this, like, this is the camel of the Prophet. This Bedouin just brought a camel and just defeated the camel of the Prophet. How, how could this happen, right? Had to arafa until the, the Prophet saw, he could see the disappointment in their faces. Had to arafa who? it goes back to the Prophet So this, this is a right, this is a, this is a, this is a right that Allah SWT has placed on himself. Because again, we talked about this before, whenever we talk about these hukuk, these rights, these are rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places on himself. But not from, for us to place any rights. We don't have any rights. The servant has no rights with his creator. All right, the, only, uh, the only rights that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the rights that Allah placed on himself to give us. Other than that, we have no rights. So he said, Haqqun ala Allahi an la yaratafi'a shay'un min dunya he said that it's, it's, you know, it's the right of Allah that He placed on Himself that He lowers or debases anything or anything that was raised by, you know, Yaratafi'a. And that means that it, but it was raised by the people. So the status of this thing was from the people. It wasn't that Allah raised it, you know, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He raises a person, then what? As long as you continue to stay in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll continue to stay raised. Once you go against that disobedience, you, know, you be going go to disobedience, and you start to get arrogant, and you start to say, "Oh, look at me, look at me," you know, Allah loves me. That's when you about to get dropped on your head, you know. So, so he said, and this is the right of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He doesn't allow anything to be raised up in this dunya by the people of the dunya, except that He lowers it and debases it. <clears throat> All right. So he said, well, he said, I said. <laughs> We do not seek status with the people because status with the people does not benefit us in this life or the next. And this is the truth because people will praise you today and insult you tomorrow. <laughs> Smile in your face today and frown, and frown at you tomorrow. So who cares? Who cares what the people think about you? And their status and their praise, it doesn't mean anything because in the end, the people will praise you for things that they see on what? TV? No, on the surface, like uh, from dealing with you on the surface. On the outside, and we know that everybody's behavior when they go outside is different than their behavior when they're in secret. So you know, so the thing is, it's like you know, you know yourself, and you know the things that you do in in secret when people don't see you. So if you know that about yourself, then what do you care? About? You know, you can't allow the praise of people to to what? To yeah, to like control your mind, like to to boost your head up when you know the things that you do. You know, if you're lazy, you're lazy. You maybe you're like a gung ho out in front of the people, but then when you go home, you're lazy. Or when maybe when you go home, you don't even care about anything with the dean. You just you know you just want to just relax and watch TV. Who knows what your situation is? Or maybe the person that goes home and commits a bunch of sin. But the, but the point is, is you know this about yourself, and that's what that's what you need to focus on. All this praise from the people and what they say. Come on, the people don't know you. They don't live with you. They don't, you know what I'm saying? They don't know, they don't know, and you know, and what did, uh, I don't remember the lines of poetry, but, uh, you know, Al-Qahtani, he wrote in an Anunia uh, in his introduction, he wrote some very, very, if you can pull it up on, on, you know, if you can pull it up on your phone real fast. They're talking about the lines where it was like, Wallahi lo alimu qadihati. They would refuse to even give me salams if they knew the things that I did when they weren't looking. You know, it's beautiful lines of poetry from Al Qahtani. But I'll go ahead and read while he's looking this up, so I'll just to finish this up. So he said, uh, 
We do not look for status. We do not seek status with the people because status with the people does not benefit us, uh, benefit us in this life or the next. If the person seeks an elevation and status with Allah, let him learn his religion. And so the same thing, you get status from the people. Is that going to, you know, the people praise you, right? People say, MashaAllah, he's a sheikh. MashaAllah, he's knowledgeable. That ain't, feeding your, that ain't feeding your kids. That ain't paying the lights. That ain't keeping the electricity. So well, let's just praise. Uh, he, so the people that let that get to their heads and that does nothing for you in the dunya, it's not paying your bills. It doesn't do anything for you. And it's not going to do anything for you in the after because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows what's in your heart. Inna Allah la yanduru ila wa ila adisamikum wa la ila surikum wa la kin yanduru ila kulubikum wa amalikum. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your bodies it doesn't look at your, your images, but he looks at your heart and your actions. That's what he's going to judge you on. So again, he said, Men Arabu, Arabu, Lo Arabu, Lo Alim, Lo Alimu, Kabiha, or that they knew the, the evil things that I did in secret, like the despicable things that I did in secret. And the person who met me would refuse to give me salam. And he's doing this obviously, this is Imam al Qahtani, he's doing this out of what? Yeah, out of being humble. He did this as Tawab, because obviously he was an Imam. He wasn't a person that, you know, us compared to him. If his actions in secret were despicable, yeah, it would be. You know, and like our actions, you know, you start to even wonder if we're even Muslims anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, well, that's, um, and, he, and he has more than that. Like, you know, we'd have, we'd have to turn that into a whole entire class just going over those lines of poetry and his introduction to that poem. But that's called a Nunia, the Nunia to Qahtani. It's a beautiful poem. Beautiful poem, and he does a lot of refutations on, on a on a lot of different things. Uh, Qahtani was a, one one of the original flat earthers. Yes, he refutes the people who say that the Earth is a globe in that poem. <laughs> yes, one of the original flat earthers. So these people now they're just like getting on this thing now on, on social media. No, he wrote that poem seven hundred years ago. You didn't know that. You didn't read the entire poem, did you? No, I didn't. Uh, I never read it. I wouldn't listen to it when I was driving. Yeah, go back and, and go and read it. Sit down and read it, inshallah. It would be beautiful if... Uh, see, people don't teach that poem a lot. I mean, he does a lot of stuff in it. He refutes the people of astrology. He refutes the people of philosophy. He refutes the Rafiba. He refutes everybody in that poem. It's, it's, and it's beautiful. It's so beautiful, like the way that he wrote it. You could just sit there, it's like 700 lines of poetry, 700 plus, give or take, you know. And, and it just, you could just read the whole poem and just go straight through it and not even be, you know, tired. You wouldn't even, you just, you just enjoy yourself the whole time reading it. And he's got a can, he goes over like different issues in filth. And the poem is just beautiful. It'd be nice if somebody would sit down, like, you know, from the ulama and write an extensive explanation of that poem. You know, they did it with the Nunia of uh, Ibn Qayyim. But see, the Nunia of Ibn Qayyim is one, it's, it's huge. It was like 4,000 lines. I have it. It's like. Yeah, so it's the, the actual poem itself is a book. <laughs> it is a book. It's huge. All right, and then on top of that, you know, but it's only dealing with the, the issues of Aqidah. Whereas the Nunia of Al Qahtani is he's just going through all, so many different things. So many different things. He just he just goes off on everybody, <laughs> so, but he does it in a very very eloquent way, man. It's, it's beautiful. All right. So he said. Uh, he said. I said. Somebody said. All right. Uh, let him focus. Let him focus on learning the Quran. If the person seeks an elevation and status with Allah, let him learn his religion. Let him focus on learning the Quran and learning the Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Then and only then will he fall under the, the, the under the following hadith. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna Allah tabarak wa ta'ala idha habba abdan na'da Jibreel inna Allah qala habba fulanan fa'ahibbahu fa'yihibbahu Jibreel thumma yunadi Jibreel uh, ila fi al-samai inna Allah qala habba fulanan fa'ahibbuhu 
فَيُحِبُّهُ أَحْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَيُضَعُوا لَهُ الْقُبُولُ فِي أَحْنِ الْأَرْضِ So here Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu he reports that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he, if he loves a servant that he calls out to Jibreel you know that you know and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him that, I, uh, that, that he loves the servant and he, and he commands Jibreel to, to love him also and then Jibreel calls out to all the other angels in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, sama, in the, in the heavens and he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this person so and then and Jibreel commands them all with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? And you guys, you love him also, and you all love him. And then once that happens, acceptance for him is placed in the hearts of the people of the earth. Now, obviously, this this is not acceptance of the people. Does that mean that Joe Biden is going to accept us, and Donald Trump is going to accept us, and all these wicked, evil, filthy kufar? No, they're not going to. This 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 acceptance for them is for the people of khair, the people of of knowledge, the people of that are trying to learn their religion, that they find acceptance with, the, with these individuals that are trying, that are striving for the next life and not being concerned with the dunya. Because you see with the people of the dunya, they're not going to have acceptance with these people. Because the people of the dunya, most of the times they're involved in things that are haram. And they don't want to hear that it's haram from this person. So they want to stay away from him. They won't find acceptance from, from him. I think, uh, I think on accident, you added a uh, word in the hadith. What did I say? Uh, what? I might have just sub up with sound. I probably started to say ila and then change it to fi. It's called it's called a better than a better than a little bit of You're gonna go over this chapter in the Nahu inshallah when we get to it. Like you say ila fi. What you're changing is better because I probably started to say, you know, it's called Sabah Lisan, you know. Sabah Lisan, Ila Shayd, and I fixed it. I don't know, I'll go back and listen to it, inshallah, and see what you're talking about. All right, and then after that, acceptance is placed in the hearts of the people of the earth. All right, this hadith shows that the person will be elevated in status when he gains the love of Allah. How does a servant become beloved to Allah? Hadith Abi Hurairah. You already know what's coming, right? Hadith Al Awliya. All right, yeah, so we're going to take this hadith and we'll wrap it up, inshallah. Good question. And the answer to that question comes in the following hadith and Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna Allah ta'ala qala man aada li waliyan faqad aadantuhu bil harb wa ma taqarraba ilayya abdi bi shayin ahabba ilayya mimma aftaraddu alayhi wa ma yazalu abdi yataqarrabu ilayya bil nawafiri hatta uhibba fi idha ahbabtuhu kuntu sama'ahu ladhi yisma'u bih wa basarahu ladhi yubasiru bih ويده التي يبطش بها ورجله التي يمشي بها وإن سألني لعطينا ولن استعاذني لعيذنا وما ترددت عن شيء أنا فاعله ترددي عن نفس المؤمن يكره الموت وأنا أكره مساءته. Alright, so this is this is the hadith. This is the narration. No, this hadith is from Bukhari, but this is a different narration, and obviously the narration I commonly uh, say. Because here you see when 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 Sa'alani in the other narration when in Sa'alani a'atayto. All right, but this one when when in Sa'alani la'atiyanna. All right, so here Abu Harirah radiallahu anhu he mentioned that the that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah subhanahu wa taala said so this is a hadith al-Qudsi man adali waliyan so whoever shows a you know enmity or hostility towards a Wali, which is a person who has gained the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his obedience. He's gained the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his obedience. So he's become closer to Allah through the obedience to Allah. So not like the awliya of the Sufiya. You know, who, who get, you know, they call themselves the awliya because they do things to get closer to the shayateen. No, but these people are the people that have stood in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learned the deen and stayed and remained in that obedience. So they become closer to Allah and they become beloved by Allah. So whoever tries to show hostility towards one of these people, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he announces war, he declares war against the person who does that. He said, وَمَا تَقَرَّبِ إِلَيْ عَبْدِي And then my servant has not come, come closer to me with something that's more beloved to me except that which I have made obligatory upon him. So the very, very first thing that we should always try to perfect are the, the obligatory acts before we start to, you know, because you get people, they... They say, I'm going to pray at night, I'm going to fast and all this, but then, you know, he's lazy during the other side of what? No, you, you perfect. Uh, you know, get in Fajr, pray Fajr correctly, pray 
pray in the masjid and pray the salawat correctly, the five salawat every day. And when you perfect that and it becomes easy, then you can start to do what? Increase and increase. And then you start to do those nawaf. You know, but and, you know, you don't start to do those extra acts before you perfect the, the, the obligatory ones first. He said, And after he perfects those, the, the obligatory acts, the servant continues to come closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those extra acts of, of righteousness. You know, fasting every Monday and Thursday, praying before, you know, two rak'ahs before Fajr, praying, you know, the two rak'ahs after Maghrib, praying at night, praying winter, and doing things like this and giving in charity other than zakat and zakat al fitr. You know, these are these extra acts. And he continues to do these extra acts of khayr and of righteousness until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him. He said, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ And if I love him, كُنْتُ سَمَعُهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِي That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes it, to, he, you know, he becomes the hearing one which he hears. And this is, of course, it's referring to as sadad That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it to where he only hears what is, what is good, what is righteous, what is, what is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِي and he becomes the vision with which he sees. So he gets to the point where he only sees, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives him the tawfiq to only see the things that are what? Beloved to him. You see like the, the ulama, Allah protects them and keeps them away from these places. That's why you don't see ulama. You're not going to go to Saudi Arabia and see ulama in the mall. You're not going to see ulama in Starbucks. You're not going to see ulama in these places. You're not. You know, you might see one of these shiuk, one of these people that teach in the masajid. But you're not going to see Sheikh Salif Ozan in, in a mall or a Starbucks. Or, you know, Allah protects them and keeps them away from all these places of facade. You know, and it keeps them, you know, so this way they don't hear evil, they don't see the evil. And in his hand with which he takes. So he only takes that which is halal. And his, in the leg with which he walks, because he only walks to that which is pleasing to Allah. وَإِنْ سَعَلَنِي لَعُطِيَنَّ And if you were to ask, ask of me, I would give him whatever he asks. وَلَنْ إِسْتَعَادَنِي لَعِيدَنَّ And if you were to seek refuge with me, I would give him the refuge that he seeks. He said, وَمَا تَرَدَّتُ عَنْ شَيْءٍ أَنَا فَاعِلُهُ And he said, I'm not hesitant to, in anything, to do anything that, of, of actions, uh, you know, like the hesitancy I have to take the soul of a, of a believing, of a mu'min, of a believer. يَقْرَهُ الْمَوْتِ He dislikes death. وَانَ أَقْرَهُ وَانَ أَقْرَهُ He said he, he hates death and I hate to do, to, to do things that, you know, that he, that, you know, anything that he dislikes. Even here the translation, I hate to disappoint him. But it's not, it's not disappointment. مَسَعَتَهُ It means I hate to cause him any harm or anything that he doesn't, doesn't like. Alright, so this hadith is a perfect illustration of what a person has to do to become a beloved by Allah. This hadith is the blueprint for success. For this reason, Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al Shawkani, Rahimullah, wrote an entire volume dedicated to explaining this hadith entitled Qatr al Wali ala Hadith al Wali. And I have this book in Jacksonville. It's a very rare book. And even if you find the book in, in, you know, in, the, in the bookstores, it's not, you're not going to get like the best copy in the world. Even the one I have in Jacksonville, you have to really be patient trying to read it. But it's, he wrote a whole book, Imam al-Shawkani wrote a whole book just on this hadith. Explain this like this big, 200, maybe 250, 260 pages. Just explaining this hadith alone. Alright, so he said another, ex another great explanation of this book was offered by Imam Ibn Rajab in his explanation of the 40 hadiths of Imam Nawawi. And it should be, I only said that it was an explanation of 40 hadiths of Imam Nawawi because that's what the people know. But in reality, uh, Ibn Rajab, he took the 40, the, the, the hadiths of Imam Nawawi are 42. It's 42 hadiths, it's not 40 exactly, it's 42. Ibn Rajab, he added eight more hadiths and made it 50. So he made it Khamsin. And then he explained those 50 hadiths in a huge volume. It's called Jami' al-Ulum wal Hikam. You know, which is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book, and every student of knowledge has to have this book. And no, it's not translated in English. All the best books. Jamiru al Ulumi wal Hikam. Wal Hikam. You know, it's just the, it's the, it's like the encyclopedia of, 
of, of, uh, of knowledge and wisdom. Just imagine, that's what he titled the book, you know. So, not like, uh, Jam is like, not really an encyclopedia, but yeah, like bringing all that, all the, all the knowledge and wisdom together, you know. In summary, all of the actions mentioned in the previous hadiths, the hadith of Abi Huraira, have the root in knowledge. The only actions that are accepted by Allah are actions that are done with ikhlas, sincerity, and actions that are done in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah, which is, you need knowledge. For the second condition to be fulfilled, the servant has to have knowledge. Knowledge is the prerequisite for every form of worship. We can see this in the following ayah, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكْ all right, so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fa'alam. He said, No. So the first command was what? To know. Huh? Oh, yeah, and know. Yeah, yeah to, but to know, to have knowledge. Annahu la ilaha illallah, that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Wastafir li And then after that, once you have that knowledge, and once you attain that knowledge, then you seek refuge, you seek uh, forgiveness for your sins. So you can't seek forgiveness for your sins until you understand that none has the right to be worshipped except the law, because then you'd be still falling into shirk and kufr. And then uh, obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept the actions of a kafir or a muslim. So for your actions to be accepted, you have to have that knowledge first. All right, I'm going to stop here because if I read any more, I'm not going to finish. I mean, we'll be here in two hours. I don't like what. Huh? Every time it's my own book and every time I pick the book up and start reading, I don't want to put it down. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa bihamdika shallallahu alaihi wasallam.